Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Icon Podcast. I'm your host as always, Gianna, and today we have the opportunity of talking to Brad. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. So take us back to the beginning, Brad. Who are you? Uh, how'd you get into real estate? What's your story? Oh, Tell gross. Everything. Why did I get into real estate? Some days I wonder why I did. But uh, <laughs> when I came in and got back to it, it was back in 2009. Uh, it was one of the worst economies we had in Canada and the city we had. And that was pretty much for everybody. And I thought, oh, fuck it. This seems like a great idea. Let's be a real estate agent. I um, was a mortgage broker for a long time, kind of came in. And I started real estate uh, in April April 1st, April Fool's of um, 2009. Wow. And then kind of fully picked it up from there. You know, the first year in real estate, there's 5,500 agents. I was in the, the first, top 200 in one of the worst economies that we had, we had seen since the early 80s. I just kept growing, you know, left my team after eight months, started my own team and kind of grew it and grew it and kept going and cries and tears and booze and panic attacks and everything else that's yeah. involved in real estate. And last year uh, we were able to do 1,250 deals. So it's been a wow. long journey, but um, it's been good. It's been really good. That's awesome, Brad. And how were you introduced to EXP then? Uh, funny story. I was actually drunk in Mexico <laughs> and uh, somebody had been trying to get me to EXP. And then I'm just like, well, my text, I think it was December 6th of uh, 2020. I said, you know, I'm never leaving uh, Remax ever. You know, it's the number one team at the number one Remax office in the world. And sure. that was my claim to fame. And by no means was I the number one Remax team in the world. It was just, I happened to be the number one office and I was the number one mm -hmm. team. So use what you got. So yeah, um, I kind of said, I'm never going to come. Then I got on a call with a friend of mine. I'm like, look, I need you to, to explain this to me because, you know, I've been saying no for years. And the people that have been bringing it to me just didn't they didn't uh, approach it to me. I'm a big vision person. They didn't approach it to mm -hmm. me with a big vision concept. There's a lot of people are selling yeah. like four or five homes a year. And I'm just being honest. I'm like, what am I going to learn from you if you're doing four or five homes? Yeah. I got on a call with uh, within 24 hours with both. I got with the opportunity. Now I see what the opportunity is. I didn't have time, but I got on the phone uh, or I got on a Zoom with Jay Kinder and Mike Reese at the same time. Okay, yeah. um, both of them within 24 hours and uh the very next day we were ready to rock and roll because i saw somebody that was far more successful than i was uh, where i wanted to be mm -hmm. and there's a platform that that allowed me to do it so uh, it didn't take long once i once i somebody explained it to me a, in a really big vision way uh, what what could be done with it absolutely that's awesome brad and uh now that you're over here at exp what's one of your favorite parts about it right so it's got collaboration or rev share stock options uh a virtual world so what's something that maybe you didn't expect about the brokerage or didn't think would be as useful um when you first started coming coming at when you first considered coming over that now maybe you use or is one of your favorite things about exp I think that for me, the the big thing that I came in, you know, to to build a downline. So rev share mm -hmm. to me was going to be a big thing. And I have a whole coaching program and everything that we have. We have like 8,000 agents that have signed up for my coaching on Tuesdays, which I never thought would ever happen. I think it's just the EXP. What I realized is it's yes, it's a brokerage, but it's more of a platform mm -hmm. to do whatever you want. Like I have coaching sure. programs and other coaching programs to bring. I'm just, I'm just like, whatever you want to do with the XP, wherever your mind wants to go within reason for real estate, it can take you there. And I think that's something I didn't realize what happened is the rev share. I understood that's going, you know, well, obviously it can be going better for what everybody tells you, but, um, I was just surprised at the platform and just what it allows you to do. It's like, get as creative as you want. And this platform lets you do it. I think that's probably the thing that uh, I like the most and that I'm more surprised the most. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like XP is just the skeleton, the bones, and you can kind yeah. of build up on it however you please. And uh, Brad, before we dive into all things icon, tell me a little yeah. bit about you and your work-life balance or your version of it at least, right? So how do you draw the line between work and play and um, keep the, the real estate industry from swallowing you whole? I think it's only recently that I have uh, by diversifying, by having a coaching program, I sell courses, you know, the revenue I have coming in from my downline. I think that now I'm slowly like, like right now I'm at my lake house or whatever, right? And I haven't been here in three years and I'm here for two solid weeks because I can work from here. My wife and I took a month off to go to Europe um, wow. and that went back to Europe two weeks later for a week. Like we always travel a lot, but this is... Um, you know, the, the work-life balance for me, like I've been in real estate and, and all kidding aside, when I talk about panic attacks and stuff, it's, it's no joke. Like, you know, if 
from somebody that always talks about mental health when I come on podcasts. It's important to me that, you know, um, to, to take care of yourself. And from a guy that suffers from depression and anxiety, and he's totally fine to talk about it, it's mm-hmm. finding the times to do stuff and, and making sure you take care of yourself. For me, it's traveling. Um, I love traveling. I travel all the time. Everybody makes mm-hmm. a joke. I'm never home. But what they also don't see is I'm up at 6 a.m. taking my first Zoom call today and I'm going all day. And and so they don't see that side of things. So right. I think that for me, it's a big part of where I want to be in the next few years is to to keep traveling, to keep doing it. And then more importantly, to keep helping more agents accomplish the goals that they want. Sure. Absolutely. I love that. And, um, you know, Brad, when it comes to uh, being an icon agent, there's a lot that goes into it, right? So there's production, cultural commitment, and there's a lot of benefits. So let's start with production side of things. Um, what does the average housing price look like for you and your market in Canada? Are you all over um, the Canadian Calgary, market? So, or? so now I'm in, like, I'm in one. We're, we're, we're in cool. one city. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's the average housing price look like for you? And how many houses do you have to sell to be able to cap? Uh, so right now for me, it's, uh, that's a great question now. I'm not trying to be this person, but you don't, you really don't have to talk big numbers. uh, We just do, I'm just being candid. I do so many, I don't even know. Like, so I think that it's like 500 and I'd say our average right now, it's gone up. It's probably 550. So I think to cap, you're probably still, you're probably still the 27 mark. I would think Mm -hmm. to probably to be an icon, you probably need to sell about 27 in my area. Okay. Cool. And then, um, Brad, as far as cultural commitment goes, right, you have to step away from commission and production and um, revenue generating things and give back to EXP culturally, whether you're coaching or mentoring, vetting other icons. So what avenue do you pick for that and why? (laughs) Uh, Do you want the honest truth? Yes, of course. It's not worth my time. I don't do it. (laughs) So Really? How do you icon? I icon, I take half, and then I just don't even worry about the other half because it's not. It's fair just, enough. Just okay. Honest. So just being completely candid, they're okay. like, "Come on and train and do that." Like I have, I'm training thousands of agents right uh-huh. now, and I just find it more beneficial of my time. And uh, that's the honest answer. Is I can you don't. not like um, can you not I guess make the training of agents kind of look like a mentorship to be able to get that other half? No, don't care. Okay. Fair enough. That's just, I that's, love it. That's just the simple, simple, honest truth. I know, but I know that it is fantastic. It's also the way my, mm-hmm. just the way my brain works. Um, but I know that's that okay. a ton of icon agents and to take advantage of coming in and helping other agents uh-huh. and the commitments, not even that much to get it. And then going to different events. Sure. Like I, I see the value for sure. 100% why people do it and how it can be uh-huh. a big attraction because you get everything back so i'm a super super big fan i preach it all the time uh but i just don't i don't take advantage of it personally (laughs) okay that's okay no i love the transparency so what you get uh half the cap back right for not doing the for just hitting the production okay so you're still getting a little bit of money back um which is better than none of your cap back so and then obviously you probably make up for it um just like probably doing like the five percent of each transaction to discounted stock whatever it all it all kind of evens out in the end in in some ways so um well then my next question you know is going to be what's your favorite part of the icon award right so you get that um opportunity to earn cap back in stock clearly uh you know sometimes i'm like is it you get to go to exp con and shareholders but clearly um that's not one of your favorite parts about it even though you see the value there too um you get a big glass shiny trophy so why do you keep setting the standard of iconing and that kind of production for yourself brad i think for me it's again i'm just being fully transparent this is probably Mm -hmm. different than some of your other podcasts you go i just really i don't care like I, for me personally, don't care. Like I don't, I'm going to start to, I think that the mistake that I made coming into EXP for all of you that are thinking about it is that I wasn't as much a part of the community as I probably should have been, especially for my production, my downlines are different. So I think that, and I'm just learning that truthfully in the last month is like, I flew out to see Chuck Fazio just to meet him. Sure. Like I flew to Phoenix. I'm like, Hey, I want to come in and, and learn from you and, mm-hmm. and to do more of that stuff and to collaborate more because for years, I just didn't really pay attention to people in my brokerage. I'm just like, I'm going to go do my own thing. So unfortunately I had the same mentality with people at my brokerage to a certain extent, but you know, now we're going to EXP con again or this year and we're going to be doing all the stuff. So the future me is going to be definitely more involved, but I love it more for, I love the icon thing so much. I truthfully do for the agents that really want to take advantage of it. Like if you're doing 27 deals already, get your money back. 
Like, come mm -hmm. on, like go in and do it. Like anybody that does that kind of volume, it's not with the XP in my opinion, like you're an idiot. Like at $16,000, you're getting back. And if you do that for 10 years, even if the stock stays the same, it's 160. So I believe so much fundamentally in everything that's there. It's just, I've chosen to do other things with my time is the right thing to say with it, but I still believe, and I know there's a hundred percent value in, in 99.9. I preach it all the time to all my agents and, and, um, that are in my downline and also in the organization, even people I don't talk to yeah. or, or even people that aren't in, it's like, Hey, you're selling 30 or 40 homes. And some people aren't even capped. It's like, I talk mm -hmm. to some people, it's a 70, 30 split at different companies and it's not capped. It's like, anyways so th those are fun conversations to have with people absolutely and brad you know for um say somebody comes up to you and they see you know your great success as an agent and they're like hey brad you know i just came over to exp from another brokerage or exp is my first brokerage um i would really like to try to icon in my first year is that something that's going to be possible for them to achieve what's some major mistakes to avoid or some um goals to make sure that they're checking off to get there I think that like we help a lot of newer agents that actually want to put in the work. The truth is, and I'm going to be again, honest, being a real mm -hmm. estate coach, you have thousands of people. I cut to the chase. So I just talked to people that I truthfully want to talk to is if you are a brand new agent, if you're doing that, you know, it takes a lot of work. A lot of people see these fancy cars and all the shiny stuff and they don't realize how much effort it takes to, to do everything. And it does take a lot of work. I think the number one thing that's literally the one of the most underrated thing is having a, a good schedule. Like mm -hmm. it sounds so lame and it's not fancy and everything, but if you don't have income producing activities in your schedule every day, it's just not going to happen or so it'll slowly go. So I think having a great schedule is a big part of it. And then you have to prospect every single day, whether you're doing it social media, whether you're doing YouTube, you have to be prospecting every day and have a great schedule. So that's the probably the first two things that I teach my new agents to make sure they're dialed in on that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, that revenue um, generating, you know, ideas, whether that's connecting with people who are in your community that may have like, you know, that sphere of influence kind of thing. Um, just make sure you're out there leaning into your mentors, holding yourself accountable for those big goals. Cause that's, that's a huge, um, goal for somebody to achieve in their first year with EXP. It's not impossible, but it's a, it's a big goal. And Brad, were you ever skeptical of EXP when it was first introduced to you? Of course. I, literally my my claim to fame is is that i literally said december 6th of 2020 i'll never come to exp ever so i think that's pretty skeptical and then three days later we were transitioning the whole team over so mm -hmm. um what i've learned about it though is that if people if it's maybe not explained to you properly if people aren't ready to see the opportunity that there's nothing you can do and you just you can be the best salesperson in the world you can do whatever but i don't know that you you couldn't pay me $5 million to go back to Remax. I don't know yeah. what the number is, but if you had a check on this table and say, you got to leave the XP to go back mm -hmm. to Remax and there's a check here for 5 million, I'm not taking it. I don't know what the number is, but I know it's not five. Right. Not, not so much. I believe in this and in that company. And I went from never going to just literally a year and a half later saying, I would say no to five mil to go back to Remax. And that's nothing against Remax. They're a great brand. That's just where I'm at right now, personally. And like the opportunity and, you know, the, the multiple streams of income that you can get going here with eXp, it's, it's just not really heard of at other brokerages, which is really cool. Um, and what sets eXp apart and Brad, for anybody that may be watching right now, they're skeptical of eXp, but they see the greener grass. Of course, their brokerage is telling them it's a pyramid scheme. It's cold sure. trying to keep them from making that move. So what would you have to say to somebody that may be watching right now, looking to make that move, but they are hesitant or, uh, they just kind of need that last little bit of reassurance or advice to to do it a couple things one we're growing at about a thousand to twelve hundred agents a week so what are those twelve hundred agents a week seeing that you're not is it that you're too like me is it that maybe you need to find somebody maybe a bigger like i'll give an example of me maybe you have bigger goals and the person talking to you about it doesn't align with you then mm -hmm. i just truthfully find somebody that aligns with you that's what i had to do to see the opportunity is i had to find somebody that had bigger visions um, just don't be closed minded. Some of the greatest things that are on the other side of the fence or whatever, how, whatever saying you want to have is there's just opportunity. And most people don't come to EXP because they're comfortable. Name something that happened in your life. That's amazing where you were in your comfort zone and just landed on your lap. It normally doesn't happen that way is that the best things in life happen outside your comfortable, uh, outside your comfort zone. So 
maybe you're not ready right now. And I had a couple of people today, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm curious, but I'm just not quite right. That's okay. Just get the information so at least you can make an educated decision whether or not it's right for you. And if it's not, that's okay. Do I think that you're a fool to not be here? Absolutely. Even if you're not with me or there's many fantastic people at EXP, but at least be open enough. It's here. First of all, pyramid schemes are legal, so it can't be one. <laughs> we're on, we're on this. We're, we're, we're a publicly traded company and we're the largest growing real estate company in the world and in history. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe just have an open mind and open heart to, to come and see that maybe it might, there might be something better. Absolutely. And Brad, I, I assume you won't be at EXP Con. I will be. Oh, you will. Okay, cool. That's will. awesome. Well, yeah, I'm excited to to catch you there. And then, um, you know, if you guys have any questions about coming over to EXP and you kind of are just, uh, you know, there's, there's some things about EXP that maybe you don't feel like you have the time for. You just want to come over and hit the ground running and sell homes. Maybe Brad is somebody that's perfect for you to reach out to, ask a couple questions about EXP, get connected there. And um, Brad, is there anything that you want to leave the listeners with as we wrap it up today? Yeah, I think that for me, the big part of it is, again, just have an open mind to it. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's I've never had this much collaboration. I've never had this much support. I've never had the opportunity to create everything I've wanted to. And if I would have stayed closed minded, my life wouldn't be changing every day right now. Right. So if you want your life to change, maybe it's not for you, but at least have an open enough mind to have a look at it. Cause if you're not, mm -hmm. the possibilities that you're missing could be, could be a big, big disadvantage to the rest of your life. Absolutely. Brad, thank you so much for your time, for your transparency today. Um, those are what make for really, really quality episodes. So I'm looking forward to um, being able to share this and I'm excited to see you in real life at EXPCon. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Of course. Talk to you soon. We'll be in touch. Bye, Sounds Brad. Good. Bye.